Hi, welcome to another edition of Cookie Time. Tonight, we're going to make a meatloaf for tomorrow, because tomorrow is actually the first game of Tampa Bay Buccaneers. First New Orleans Saints, we got some guests coming over. So, for this dish, what we're going to need is first is three different types of ground meat. So, what I got right here is a half and half ground beef, ground pork mix. It's got 80 20 fat. You can find this at, I, we always find it at Walmart. It runs about a little under seven bucks, but it gets the job done for we're trying to do it. Also, in this in our mix bowl, we have a pound of ground turkey. Now, one thing with meatloaf, I always like using different meats. You can use all ground beef, but to get the best flavor, get everything, is to get a get do a mix like this. Preferably, there used to be a grocery store that had a it was ground veal, ground meat, and ground pork. So this is a pound of ground this, meat, this, a pound of pork, and then a pound of turkey. Yes. Okay. On top of that, we have our just a little, we're gonna use a little dash of this. Now, every meatloaf is gonna need two things before, outside of any of these. You're gonna need breadcrumbs. We went too fast. Okay, these are Italian style breadcrumbs. Yes. You're gonna need at least two eggs. Okay. And you're gonna season. Now, this is something you've probably seen on Facebook before, Tasty. I've never used this before. But I saw it while I was going through. I was like, let's try something new tonight. So, but you season it how you want. This to me, meatloaf is something you can you can always customize. Like I've done a, a more barbecue version of this. I've done like a Mexican version of this. I've done an Italian version of it. Italian version of this. It's something that you can do whatever you want with, manipulate. That's what makes it so easy. And really, as long as you have the breadcrumbs, the eggs, and the meat. You can do whatever you want. That's what I love about meatloaf. So the first thing we're gonna do is put everything in the mixing bowl we need. So Okay. So I put the turkey in there. Now the reason why turkey's already in there, we always buy like the three pounds of ground turkey and I split it up in our freezer. So now we're gonna drop that in there. Both our eggs. <laughs> Yeah, I know it slid direct. Let me get a paper towel real quick. Yeah, this is also a dish you're going to get dirty doing. <laughs> Next, we're going to do. We're going to shake a little of this down. When you shake this, it's good enough. I would say I'm probably going to use around a quarter cup, probably if I was to measure. But if you want a little more, this is going to make it a little more crumbly. Keep it a little more since so it's going to draw in some of that moisture. Like as we spoke before, when we made when we made enchiladas, that turkey's going to bring out a lot of moisture because it's got a lot of water built in. Okay. So next thing, we're going to take our seasoning, our main seasoning for this dish. Do you need two of them? It says for two pounds, so yeah, we're good. I just want to use the toby. Well, I'll use the sprinkle toast. We're good. It'll be fine. It's very green. <laughs> it smells good. Well, it's got garlic, onion, red bell pepper flakes. So that's the. Now, I'm just going to add a little bit of this. Just a dash. Okay. So now here's the part <laughs> that's. You're gonna get a little dirty. So you got kids, use them for this. So we're just gonna get in here, we're just gonna mix this all up. We're gonna make sure to break those egg yolks and incorporate it everywhere. Now, again, this is one of our big dishes we've done down here that this is gonna be cooked tomorrow. I just wanted to prep it tonight because I have guests. I have another <laughs> Sorry, I thought I that. Ooh, that pepper. That toady's got gotcha. you. I thought I had to sneeze. Sorry. That's <laughs> okay. Happens. But also, just to tell y'all, the video after this, we're doing, if you thought the s'mores dip was easy, we're doing crock pot devil's food cake. It's a three ingredient, but you don't gotta mess the oven. You just gotta mess, you just gotta prep some stuff. In the crock pot. In the crock pot, two and a half hours. I just want to make sure all this is. I will say also, because my hands are a little cold right now, let if you can let your meat <laughs> go to room temperature, you won't have what I do right now where my hands are frozen. You need more breadcrumbs? Uh, I 
I think I got enough of everything in here. Need another egg? But yeah, I probably need to keep. Carol, can you give me another egg? Whew. My hands are freezing right now, people. It's the cost, cost of good food. Yep. Here you go. So three eggs. Yeah, we're gonna add a third. Probably an egg per pound. Yeah, that's well. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. So first, let me get. <laughs> some we're gonna we're gonna take a pause break for so, you to go wash your hands. Well, no, not really yet, because I gotta move this to here and I'm gonna have to form it. So. So do we need a pause break? No, we do not need a pause okay. break. Cause... Just kidding. <laughs> so did you put anything in this pan? Yes, I did. Just some spray. Just some. So this is a glass nine by 13, like casserole dish. Yeah. And when you do this, don't try to form it like a loaf. I, we just don't have a meatloaf pan per se. Can you use a meatloaf pan? Oh yeah, I would rather use that. We still have one. So I'm just gonna do it like this. Cause honestly, we do a meatloaf metal is preferred, but I just don't feel like messing up our cake pan. Cause this is going to, this is gonna be a lot easier to clean. I have a loaf pan. It's fine. But this is going to cook even or evenly though. Now what I'm doing right now, press down, but I'm trying to make it even so we have a nice even cook time. If you notice, everything's incorporated perfectly. Yeah, you can see all them spices on there. Now, we go put over here. <laughs> Woo! Now I will say, I will highly recommend not doing that when the meat's just out of the fridge. Because right now, my hands are frozen. Right, get you some soap. I was, I was getting off the residue first. Whew, thank you. Off. Yeah, and everybody should be washing their hands. It is September 12th, 2020, so we're still in wash your hands all the time, folks. It don't matter what date it is. You're supposed to wash your oh, hands yeah, after saying, ground meat. I know that, but I'm just saying in general right now, at this time period, for future people, they're watching this like five years from now, this whole stuff's over with. They're reading this, they're, your kids are reading this in their history books five years from now. Okay. So we got one more thing to do tonight. We do? We're going to pour barbecue sauce on top. I'm going to need a spoon. Barbecue sauce? But we don't have any ketchup. So. Well, so it has a glaze on top. I've never not used ketchup. I've done this before. You're going to love it. Okay. Do you like barbecue sauce? So. He's done this before. We're going to love it. I'll be using a hickory brown sugar. What size bottle is this? This is just an 18 ounce bottle. I just want to use this before I use the bigger one. So we're just gonna that whole bottle. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna hopefully not. And now we're just gonna take our spoon and just work it back and forth. Get all these nooks and crannies. And what we're gonna do to miss in this nook. Pop in there. You want kind of spread even so you don't want globs everywhere. This is gonna be just like Now I will say if you want like a more of a like a Mexican flavor one or like a taco diet taco meatloaf as I like to call it, use taco seasoning of this. If you want more of a Crazy barbecue, you can use that McCormick or any type of your dry rub with this too. I've done that a million times and it comes out good. This, I saw that kind of just regular seeds, like I'll try that. Can you use the traditional ketchup, brown sugar, nutmeg sauce? Oh yeah. But the way I look at this, this is just already made. It has almost everything you need for a sauce, but you can always use traditional. I've never really made it like that. That's so. how I made mine. Okay, good enough. So. Now for the rest of the night, we're going to get some tin foil. This is one thing my father-in-law gets us every year. 
500 feet of a loaded foil. This is like a, almost like a gag gift for us now you that we use. You can do it this way, so you don't use as much. That's how you evolve. So what are we doing with it now? We're gonna put it yeah. in the fridge. We're gonna put it in the fridge. Okay. Let's sit overnight. Okay. Our game's at 3:30. 3:30 Central Time. That's when we kick off against the Saints. I'll probably put it in the oven around two o'clock at 3:50. Let it go for about an hour. Straight from the fridge to the oven, or does it need to warm up to room temp first? I'll probably sit it out for a little, for about 30 minutes, let it warm up a little bit. One thing to have with something like this, especially if you're doing thick meat, is a meat thermometer. Where'd you get that? Um, Kayla bought from Amazon from me. <laughs> she put a digital meat thermometer in this white camp with. You, all you do is pull this off. There goes some right there. Turn it on. Right now it's gonna show probably like 74. Put my hand on it. It's gonna go up over top. So what I'm gonna be looking for tomorrow, I think it's what right, should it be for meatloaf? About 150. In the center? In the center, yes. Okay. Because I want to I think it's 145, but you kind of but I like go 150 just because I know it's done then. Because it's with having pork in it. I want, no, I'm sorry, I need to go to 165 because I got turkey. When you're doing poultry, poultry is the highest level, the highest heat you need for any type of meat to cook. So I want to make sure this is at 165. This is not, if I was doing ground meat, just straight ground meat, I didn't have to worry about going a little, a little like medium rare or. Let's or say rare. I'm new to cooking. Is yeah. this something that you can make medium rare? Not, not with that meat. Okay. Definitely not so with poultry. It needs to be cooked thoroughly. Not with poultry and pork. If you were just doing straight ground beef, yeah, you get away with that. You definitely could. But since we got poultry and we got pork, no, you want to cook this all the way through. So you want what? So we want to hit 165 tomorrow. Okay. So. So we're gonna pull it out about 30 minutes before we put it in the oven. Yeah. 350. One hour. One hour. Then what we're gonna do, even if it's cooked all the way through, we're gonna crank our broiler up. And kind of get some caramelization of that barbecue sauce at the end. Okay. And we're gonna do it, you know, two three minutes just to get it where it's bubbly and kind of crispy. So we'll record that part. Yes, we will. So I'm gonna put this up. I will see y'all tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, we're back. Um, it is game day, of course. That's why I bucked your hat, bucked your shirt. Uh, we're getting put ready to put the meatloaf in the oven. So still the tin foil. We set it out for about an hour. Uh, just to get back to room temperature. So now we're just going to throw it in the oven. Put it off in there. We're going to put our timer at one hour. Oh. And then we got our size. I'm just going to do some instant baked potatoes. But I will say, if you're looking for a really good instant gravy, this is what you need to get right here in Louisiana. If you can find this, this is awesome. Better than any other gravy mix I've ever used before. So we'll see you about an hour. Bye. Hey guys, forgot we have guests over and everything, but this is the final project right here. So next we'll be doing devil, quick devil's food cake. So don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and we'll see y'all next week. Bye.